All right, there was the very latest Congress loyalist troubleshooter died in wool when it came down to allegiance to the Gandhi. Harish Rawat today, through a series of tweets, seems to have raised the banner of rebellion. Two months before Uttarakhand elections, the Chief Minister of Facebook Congress, one of the party's key troubleshooters, trusted aide and Gandhi loyalist, the former Chief Minister of Uttarakhand, in a series of tweets, seems to have raised the banner of rebellion. The man who has been at the centre of solving the Punjab Congress crisis is now the latest problem for the Congress. Harish Rawat, perceived to be dyed in wool when it came to allegiance to the Gandhis, penned multiple tweets that appear to be a public takedown of the Gandhis. In tweets that would shake up the Congress High Command, Harish Rawat appears to be accusing the Gandhis of abandoning him. He tweeted, asking for guidance from God and says he has had enough. Further tweeting, isn't it strange we have to swim in this sea of elections? But instead of supporting me, the organization has either turned its back on me or is playing a negative role. The powers that have let loose many crocodiles in the sea that we have to navigate, those whom I'm supposed to follow, their people, have tied my hands and feet. I have been getting the feeling that Harish Rawat, it's gone too far. You have done enough. It is time to rest. Then there is a voice in the head that quietly says, I'm neither weak nor will run away from challenges. I'm in turmoil. Hope the new year shows me the way. The Congress veteran making it clear he is reconsidering his future in the party. The question is, what is he considering now? The Uttarakhand political landscape is a buzz that the Aam Aadmi Party has been wooing Rawat to be their chief minister face. <laughs> Harish Rawat is still a popular mass leader in the pole-bound state of Uttarakhand. Will the Congress course correct? Or will Rawat be another face of the ongoing Congress implosion? Bureau Report, India Today. All right, here's the latest news break coming in on this. Now, sources within the Congress have come out and suggested that what Harish Rawat is doing is pressure tactics before ticket distribution in the state of Uttarakhand. I want to cut across right now to, to my colleague Moshmi, who's going to get us more, but to get our viewers up to speed with the very latest of this massive crisis that the Congress is facing in Uttarakhand, where people suggest that Congress actually had a chance, was the principal opposition in polls to the Bharatiya Janta Party. On the other hand, there is news which is also coming out that the Aam Aadmi Party had been actively pursuing Rawat to be their chief ministerial face when it came down to the polls in Uttarakhand. Harish Rawat today in a series of tweets seems to have raised the banner of revolt where he seemed to be suggesting that the Gandhis have abandoned him. Those who instru instruct him uh, those he's supposed to take orders from are making sure that he's swimming with crocodiles. Now, sources indicate within the Congress that all of this is pressure tactics by Harish Rawat in order to get a larger say when it comes to ticket distribution in the hill state of Uttarakhand. Elections in Uttarakhand viewers are in order in the next two months' time. Harish Rawat is a popular face still. He's been the former chief minister of Uttarakhand. I want to connect right now to my colleague Moshmi to get us a larger indication on what is going on within the Congress camp. You know, Moshmi, news coming in that the Congress seems to think that this is all a pressure tactics of sort so that Rawat has a bigger say in ticket distribution. The fact is, Moshmi, you and I both know he is the biggest bet that the Congress has going for it where Uttarakhand is concerned. Shouldn't he in any case have a big say when it comes to ticket distribution? 
Preeti, you know, uh, the Congress party has been uh, battling dissensions for a long period of time. Harish Rawat is one of the closest aides, uh, you can say a troubleshooter, Man Friday uh, for Rahul Gandhi. Uh, even when the G23 were rebelling, Harish Rawat defended uh, Rahul Gandhi and in fact attacked the G23 uh, for being uh, only bothered about their own interests and not the party's welfare. So now when Harish Rawat tweets that out, it really has a ripple effect because uh, remember Harish Rawat has been a former chief minister. He was in charge of Punjab handling that precarious situation and is one of the trusted loyalists of uh, Sonia Gandhi. And uh, we are told that this is just not the tip. This is just the tip of the iceberg because on the 5th, apparently Harish Rawat could make a decision and make an announcement probably hinting at uh, retiring from politics okay. uh, because of the, uh, the, uh, the level of frustration that has creeped in uh, because he's being he's saying that he's not being given a free hand so we'll have to wait and see but this uh, entire tussle is not going to die down uh, okay. anytime soon Preeti. appreciate you joining us Moshri. we're going to continue to come back to you with the very latest let's now cut across to one of the biggest cons that was pulled by Sukesh and the role of Nora Fateh in it this is the latest Bollywood Congate has taken a fresh twist. Dancing diva Nora Fatehi, who was linked to conman Sukesh Chandrasekhar in the 200 crore rupees extortion scam, will now turn witness. The Enforcement Directorate has officially named the actor. The probe will now see Nora vs Sukesh unfold. The Bollywood diva has been questioned several times by the ED over her links to Super Chor Sukesh and the gifts he showered on her. Nora was gifted a BMW car and an iPhone by Sukesh for attending an event in Chennai for his partner Lena Paulos, who is also an accused in the case. Sensational WhatsApp chats accessed exclusively by India Today exposed the close ties between Nora and Sukesh. The chats show the mastermind and Nora discuss luxury cars. It shows Sukesh told her that the gifts are being lavished on her because he liked her as a person. Nora in her statement to ED claims she received luxury gifts including a Gucci bag and an iPhone 12 from LS Corporation, a company she attended an event for and not from Sukesh directly. The elaborate multi-crore scam that swindled a billionaire businessman of 200 crore rupees is turning out to be suspense thriller like no other. Bureau Report, India Today. All right, yes, with the tally of uh, the new mutant variant Omicron rising in the country, the Prime Minister all set to hold a review meeting tomorrow, but certain advisories already in place. A super mutant variant, another looming COVID wave, steadily climbing tally. A concerned government is now stepping up the Omicron fight. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is to hold a big review meeting on Thursday. The centre has also issued directives to states to step up measures to contain the Omicron spread, advising states to set up war rooms, impose night curfews if needed, and carry out door-to-door -door contact tracing and searches. The centre has also asked states to enforce home isolation and accelerate measures to ensure 100% vaccination. Delhi Disaster Management has banned all kinds of functions in view of Christmas and New Year. While parties themselves are banned, strangely, 200 people are being allowed to attend marriages and other such functions at the same time. The Delhi government has also imposed curbs on large gatherings and restricted seating capacity in restaurants to 50%. These curbs will remain in place till the end of the year. Due to the rising Omicron cases, the DDMA has extended its pre-implemented COVID curbs till the 31st of December, due to which restaurants will still have to operate at a 50% capacity and large gatherings continue to be prohibited along with all religious gatherings. Restrictions have also been imposed 
in Mumbai, where parties on terraces and beaches have been banned. However, Mumbaikers will be allowed to hold indoor parties with 50% capacity. Gatherings with 25% capacity are allowed in open areas. Special approval will also be required for a gathering of over 1,000 people. BMC officials is also saying that it is keeping an eye on the situation. If continuous rise in the Omicron cases are there in the city, then more stricter curbs can be applied. The Karnataka government, meanwhile, has also imposed a ban on mass gatherings. Restaurants and bars will only be allowed to function with a 50% customer capacity. No special events or DJ parties are being allowed anywhere in the state of Karnataka. Tourists who've been flocking to Goa in the holiday season will face an imposition of Section 144, which prevents gatherings of more than three people. The state government has also been asking people to adhere to social distancing norms and wear masks at all times. Many of these rules across cities and tourist destinations in the country could intensify in the days ahead. India Today will keep you updated. Bureau Report, India Today. The irony in midst of all of this, viewers, is that uh, the National Vaccine Panel has recommended to the government that children yet do not need vaccines. The government has been sent a clear message by top medical experts in India. There's no urgency on children's COVID vaccination in India right now. A member of the National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization in India has informed the central government that children are doing fine and we should not be vaccinating them right now. Truly, there is no decision yet. All we have done is we have gone through the process of looking at the issue in terms of expected mortality, how much we can prevent. And all these things we have gathered, information. Current standards to say there is no justification for starting the vaccination for below 12 years of age now. The recommendation is backed by data that shows no significant mortality among children due to COVID-19. There are also concerns about the safety of vaccines when it comes to children. Here, if you come do this risk and benefit analysis, the risk of COVID is low, mm. but risk of this 10 vaccine associated risk would be more. In so children. In, in, in children. In children. So, uh, uh, definitely, uh, to the best of my understanding and as per the available evidences, we cannot recommend um, uh, children vaccination, at least in the country. While the central government hasn't made an official statement, Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia had told senior officials in October there should be no rush in clearing vaccines for children. Some experts have expressed concerns on this recommendation. If your child is not protected, parents will feel insecure, one. Secondly, they can get an infection, they can get a severe infection also in, at school and they can bring that infection and make other elderly who are more vulnerable to, be infe to, uh, to get infection. There is no clarity on vaccines for children in India. Even those that were approved are waiting in line. Zykov D is cleared for children between 12 and 18 years. Bharat Biotech's Covaxin, which was recommended for children, is awaiting a final nod from the drug controller. And Covovax, which has been given emergency use approval by the WHO, is still not approved by India's drug regulator. A fourth candidate, Biological Ease vaccine, is in phase 2 and 3 clinical trial stage. This vaccine is for children aged 5 to 18. Even as the decision has been sent to the government, it's a recommendation and the final decision will be taken by NEGWAC. But clearly the recommendation shows that indeed the government and the working group at this moment feel that children will still do better without getting vaccinated for COVID-19. Even today, as Omicron cases continue to surge in India. Milan Sharma for India Today. All right, viewers, with both houses being adjourned cyanidine, it was curtains down on an explosive winter session. In terms of productivity, here are the details.
A stormy winter session has come to an end and it culminated too on a stormy note. We, the people of India, both houses of parliament were adjourned indefinitely amid protests by opposition MPs over the suspension showdown and the Lakhimpur Kheri case. The winter session did see crucial reforms being passed, but endless disruptions and protests meant many hours wasted with zero business. The Lok Sabha saw 77% productivity and the Rajya Sabha had an abysmal 43% productivity. And that's what prompted the Rajya Sabha Chair Venkaya Naidu to urge MPs to introspect. I'm not happy to share with you the house function much below its potential. I urge all of you to collectively and individually reflect and introspect if this session could have been different and better. In the Lok Sabha, the protests by the opposition cost the exchequer a whopping 28.2 crore rupees, with 18 hours and 48 minutes being wasted. वर्तमान सत्र में कार्य के लिए आवंटित कुल समय में से वेधान के कारण 18 घंटे 48 मिनट का समय व्यर्थ हुआ. The government squarely blamed the opposition for this mammoth waste of resources and another session filled with protests instead of productive debate. First of all, they should run the house. Unless they allow the run house to function smoothly, so what do we do? We have done our people, BJD, we have done our people, we have done our people, we have done our people, we have done our people. But the opposition was unfazed. The last day of the winter session was marked again by protests, this time over the suspension of another MP, Derek O'Brien. The TMC MP was suspended for flinging the rule book at the chair in the Rajya Sabha on Tuesday. We have all the regard for the chair. We have all the regard for the rules. But, but, 259. 259. The same thing which you all did on the farm bills. Please, I'm all in the express note. We woke up and all who? We, the people of India, have been solidly Opposition MPs marked the last day of the winter session with a dharna in the parliament premises. Gandhi statue becoming the nerve center for the opposition uh, to launch its frontal attack on the government here. The suspended MPs reading the preamble of the constitution, marking their protest against uh, their suspension, terming it as totally autocratic and dictatorial. Another parliament session dominated by protests, by politics and by disruptions. Who is to blame? The opposition for refusing to allow the house to function or the government for failing to reach out to the opposition. With Moshmi Singh, Bureau Report, India Today. Welcome back. You're watching our fact check segment where we bust certain claims masquerading to be facts on social media platforms and WhatsApp groups as a claim, suggesting that the Niagara Falls was lit up in honor of the Bangladesh Victory Day. Well, the fact check on that the Niagara Falls was lit in green and red for Christmas, nothing to do with the Bangladesh Victory Day. With that quick fact check, time for us to go into a quick break, but you do stay with me on the other side. It's to the point.